Odometer rebuild and clock repair. W107. Okay, so now we're knee deep in this 107 odometer. We've got a broken, uh, we've got a broken reference resistor here, which we're going to fix. And we've also got a broken clock in this car. So this clock absolutely does not function at all. Now, most of the time, the problem with the clock is that the two electrolytic capacitors on it go out. But I want to show you guys how to replace these because it's not as straightforward and easy as one would think. And then after we replace that stuff, we're going to do final. Um, we're going to do final assembly of the entire mechanism. So we're going to take the clock out again. Another four six millimeter Allen screws. But in order to pull the clock, we've also got to take the tachometer apart, which I really don't like doing. So before we do any of this stuff, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take the clock. And we're going to set it to noon. Why noon? Well, that's an easy place to remember. And then off goes one. And then off goes another. Sometimes these just do not want to come off, but these slip on the really the really hard one, I promise you, is the tack needle. So the tack needle should be aligned with this mark. It's the zero mark. And what we're going to do is we're just going to turn and turn and turn until it comes off but you don't want to bend. So we're going to put that in a safe place along with our other two needles. Now, people are going to be like, Pierre, why aren't you painting the needles? Why? Because I'm not into that cosmetic stuff. I don't really care about it very much. I need stuff to work. If somebody wants their needles painted, then they can go hire some artist who's living off of their parents' trust fund or something to get their, their freaking needles painted. Um, as far as I'm concerned, it's just going to turn yellow again in two years. So we're going to take this face plate off of the clock. With these tiny little screws. By the way, I hope you guys got that shot with me pulling the needle off. Nothing is guaranteed with this stuff because it's kind of new to us. Anyway, as I had said earlier, we're making these videos for our subscribers. You said, oh, you don't show enough technical stuff. Well, you know, <sighs> sorry. <laughs> That's all I can say. I mean, if you want to see technical stuff, come visit me at my shop. Doors always open. You know, we've had a lot of subscribers who have come to visit and they have been able to vouch for the fact that they've seen things here that uh, that they haven't seen in other shops. So holding this in our palm, we're going to pull these screws only. Do not pull the tack screws, just the clock screws. Now you're probably asking, what is the silver doodad in the middle of a gold bullseye? That is the clock ground and we're going to have to unsolder it. It is a soldered member. So let's get these out first. Three screws holding the clock mechanism in. By the way, it doesn't get easier if you're wondering. Okay, let's see if this thing is hot enough. Oh, yes it is. Look, it comes right out. See, you just give it a little touch. We're going to set our tack assembly aside. Having a hot soldering iron is so critical to doing this job right. Now you've got your little uh, carpet here. You're just going to peel this back and unsolder these two points. 
So these are Come on. Fracco lasted for like 20 plus years. If somebody knows where to buy Fracco capacitors, then I owe you lunch if you ever visit me. I'm not talking about like a sandwich from McDonald's. I mean a good lunch. Okay. I was supposed to do this on my on one of our subscribers 420 SELs this weekend, but I forgot all my stuff. Come on, you're almost there. I need a better soldering station too, I know. But I actually have a lot of fancy soldering stuff. But my goal was to show you guys how to do this with minimal instrumentation. You see how the rubber part of the capacitor comes out? That usually means that at some point in time it blew up. So what we're going to do now is we're going to heat these things up. And make sure that the little holes are visible. There we go. Then we're going to set this aside. And we're going to take our new electro caps. So you want a 16 volt, 100 microfarad electro cap. If that sounds like Greek to you, then it's just stamped right on the side of the electrolytic capacitor. Let's move this, shall we? That way I can... Now what we're going to do is we're just going to dab some solder right here. Or wherever we can get it. It's kind of a big clunky soldering iron, I guess, for this little tiny job. But you want to make sure that you don't have too much extra solder because if you do then it can touch the board and short out. Sometimes getting a good, firm connection can be hard too, but that's good right there. <laughs> These little solder trails all over the unit are like slug trails almost. They're extremely small and they can be very difficult to... sometimes repair, but I'm going to show you how to do that too. My idea here was to deal with the worst case scenarios of these jobs instead of like the perfect one. You know, this is a this is an odometer on a 100 plus thousand mile 560. Now we're going to trim these little legs here in a second, but I got to get this and this done. Okay, so that was that that actually went a little better <laughs> the second time. Although we're not totally done yet. Now I got to trim these suckers. They seem to be firmly planted, which is very important. 
and there you go. Now, we've got to get this thing reinstalled back in here. So, our first trick is to get all the old solder out of the target right here in the middle. 